Hey guys, welcome back to Cooper Style Reviews. We're taking a look at Snail Shells Rosetta from the game Punishing Gray Raven. So I'm just going to be transparent off the back. I do not have experience with that game for anything. I've seen videos of it and stuff like that because I am into like some gadget stuff and this and that. But this one in particular, I have not had any experience with. I know of the character what she generally looks like, but her abilities, things like that, the little nods to the game that are going to be included with this figure, I have no knowledge of, and I wasn't going to try to just speed test myself or crash course myself in it just for the sake of pretending like I know something that I don't. So we're going to review this product as a product. I'm not going to lie. This is my favorite snail shell product so far. It might be the worst video game homage of all time, but as a product, I'm enthused and I'm really excited to share this with you. So what comes in the bag or in the box? Um, it's going to be Rosetta herself. Now, there are some accessories that are already attached to this. There's such a pain in the butt to attach and attach correctly that I'm just keeping them on rather than doing a spread like I normally do with everything, you know, separated. So there are these, I don't know what, they're like antenna type deals. There are five of them that hang off of her back. They're wires and they're just the angle to plug them in are really particular. So that's on her while I'm knocking her over. And she's not an unbalanced character. I just happen to graze her. I'm up above it right now. But, and there are these two, she has like a wing of light type effects over here that go inside of these. So she is a flight character, but the actual like backpack things they plug into and they plug in from a very specific angle. So outside of that, everything else accessory wise, it's going to be right here. So just taking a look, stand pieces, the wing of light type effects. She comes with a variety of lancers. This is one with a shield attached to it. This is one separated from a shield. This one has two different and open and closed blade piece. She has a separated shield, variety of hands. There are these two gauntlets on her wrist. These are variants of that that you can replace the default ones with so that you can attach these lancers or these shields to her forearm. She holds them, but there's a whole slot in there for her to be able to um, grip even easier. So she has a Minotaur type character. So there's this whole thing, looks like something out of Metal Gear when it's separated, but plugs into her butt and she becomes a Minotaur. There's her alternate butt piece. Right now I have the one in, with the hole in it on her. So this is the closed one. I don't display my figures backwards, so no need for it. But when I, you know, do the rotation of her and stuff like that, this will be attached as well as the pictures from behind on kumasau.com. A variety of hands. Now, this is incredible. Her face, the eyes look painted on, but this still uses the movable eye thing. They did change up the adapter to rotate those eyes. We'll show that off. And then just a couple of um, spare wrist pegs. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy started. All right, and going over the figure itself, height. These in general aren't 1 12th scale. I don't know what exactly the scale is, but they tend to be between six and a half and seven inches tall. This one, seven inches on the button from this perspective. And she's a leggy one. I have not tested the compatibility of her limbs with any of like the wolf girls or swimsuit girls, any of that stuff. So I don't want to say swimsuit because that's still wolf, but like the milk tea girl and whatnot, phantom, any of that stuff. I know the legs don't come off. I tried to pull them off and it looks like there's something that holds them in place. So I don't think that that's a possibility and I haven't seen any pictures, surprisingly. Even on like Weibo and stuff like that. Looking at the head articulation, the head is on a ball joint. It's hard. It can technically like do a 360 and whatnot. There is some up and down movement. I'm not going to push it because the hair tends to hit these shoulder pads here. These two pieces in the back. Here's up, two ponytails. They move. These two pieces do not. We'll go over the faces later. The eyes do have movement. Now in terms of the shoulder pads, these go around. They are on ball joints, but there's not a lot of wiggle room with them. All right. These shoulder pads 
right here, the side shoulder pads built into the arm, but there's enough to get it moved around. So there's parallel. I'll actually use this arm instead. Okay. Let's see what she can do for a 360. It can do a 360, but with this part, it does block. All right. Arm isn't on a simple ball joint. It's got a peg in, and then there's a separate joint for it to go in and out. So you do have to be mindful of which way you're going and make them work in conjunction with each other. Those two joints where when it's a ball joint, you can kind of just wiggle in the light. 360 on the bicep. Double jointed elbows. The wrist are standard. There is a one way rock. And there we go. It's that way right now. And then the hand itself does swivel. No articulation in the fingers, really tiny hands. Waist, she's actually got great movement in the waist. So there is back bend and ab crunch. So this top part, back bend, oh, ab crunch. And there's this purple piece here. If you put it up too far, it can pop out and then block the ab crunch coming down. Let me make sure this is still on camera, focused. So this purple part here, make sure that it's inside of this top waist piece so that you can get the full ab crunch. Okay, so there's that. And then the waist itself, actually, because there's swivel up here, but the waist itself actually does have 360 swivel there. And we talked about this butt piece. It comes out, two interchangeable ones. All right. Let me do, do, do. Okay. There are three pegs there, but they're really small. And we'll go over that one. I actually go over this piece, but you gotta be careful because I don't wanna break the pegs and have them not able to pop in. That would not be good. Because then I'd have to permanently glue one and even though that's fine, it's not preferred. All right, so I don't want to take too long on this, but at the same time, I don't want to take it off just for aesthetic sake. All right, there we go. So we went over the 360 there. You got to watch it. These do pop off. So you got to be mindful of those when moving the waist um, as well as the hips. Oh, and before I go, the bottom waist itself does have movement there. So lots of movement in the waist, more than any other snow cell figure that I've had so far, which is awesome. So these side skirts that we just went over here, they move out. They're actually moved out as much as possible right now. All right. So let me see if I can zoom in and show you guys how the inside of her that works so there are two pieces that move there's these l pieces here that extend outward from the crotch they um swivel in and out okay and then the hips themselves are on a ball joint so swing up all right backward swing okay and then you can take the hips, move them in and out, and that butt piece just is what it is, all right? And we already talked about the hip skirts too, so you just gotta be mindful of those pieces. It's one of those things where a lot of movement, moving parts, all right? A lot of interchangeable stuff. And these, which I, I, you know, I'm a fan of the aesthetic. It's just putting them in and out, that kind of sucks. But it gives us the opportunity to go over that because I wasn't gonna go over that in this review, so F it, why not? All right, so we'll kind of do a two for here. All right, so knees. Multiple parts in the knees, right? We went over the swivel there, all right? There's the main knee here, and you can see this thigh piece moves with it, so that's really cool. I like that kind of movement in figures. But there's also another smaller hinge there that moves by itself too, so double jointed knees, all right? It's a roundabout way of saying double jointed knees. We'll go over the swivel here, all right? The foot, front of the foot, and the heels can move in and out, so that's really cool. Now, one thing I will say before I show you guys how to peg those tentacles in is this thing was a jank 
a mess when I first got it. I use a Kiki joint polish, which I don't have set in here to show you guys. It's unfortunate, but just look up K-I-K-I joint polish. Uh, it got this thing up to snuff. It went from being the worst snail shell figure I own to the best once I uh, put that into the joints and let it set and stuff like that. So you're going to need it with this figure. Apparently, universally, they just come really floppy. I don't know why, but it's what it is. Like to the point you can pick it up by the head, do like this, and it just flops and wiggles every single joint in it. So you're going to have to take some time, polish those joints, make sure that they're good to go up to snuff. Okay? So we'll get into poses and stuff like that. I am actually going to go over each and every accessory individually. And then we'll use a section of this video to kind of show them all put together. I think that's the easiest way to go about it. So let's go here, right? Let's see if we can get this brighter. There we go. There are five little holes through the back. All right. And this is going to be hard to do on camera. I think my hand's going to have to cover it up. But we'll see. I've already got it bent. It's not that these fit ill or anything like that, but they're cut at like an angle, those holes. So it's finding that angle to press these into. And the wires, they're, they, the whole thing, the whole wire moves. So while you're trying to press in and find that angle, while well, that just fell out, um, the wires tend to bend. I wish that they were just straight for a certain section of the wire to plug them in and then the rest of it was movable all right and same with these wing pieces here but those are a lot easier to find because they're bigger all right okay so side skirts the butt i'm not going to go through that um, i'm not really comfortable even trying that on camera because they're so small and the spaces are so tight they don't normally come off but obviously i'm doing a lot more fiddling than i guess normal and I'm reaching around the camera and this and that and, you know, 50 million other excuses. But, yeah. There's one more view over. And then shortly we'll get into these accessories and whatnot and get you guys out of here. And now we're just taking a really quick look at the additional faces. So, right now I have her more stoic face attached. I don't think that that's the one that came on by default. I've been going back and forth. I've actually been taking pictures as... I do this review this time, but she has another neutral face, but it's more of a smile than, you know, if you look at her eyebrows, eyes, things like that, more of a neutral expression. This one feels a bit more angry. And then she has this one here that's actually an angry open mouth face, which is really cool because it answers my request that I've been asking them for ages to of just having angry faces with come with these figures you know you've got these killing machines and all of their faces are smiling blushing um yeah it's just a little bit different and I understand it appeals to a certain type of fan base and whatnot it's it's niche stuff so if you look at these faces these eyes look painted on but they're actually not They do have the movable eyes in the back. And the way that you do these is with this guy here. I'm going to go ahead and adjust them off camera. They're just little crossbars on the back. I mean, they're blading. But what I'm going to do is make these eyes look to her left. And there we go. Now, in terms of changing out the faces, I have a side-by-side -side of all three faces and whatnot. Uncumulastyle.com, that gallery. Remove the front of the hair, just like every other one. Pop on the face and put it back. Make sure she's balanced here. There we go. There are the faces. And this is just a quick overview of how to attach the, whether it's a lance or whether it's a shield, they're all going to go on the same way. So what you're going to do, she comes with two different types of gauntlets for her arms. 
there's the default one and then this one. The difference is you'll see there's a little bit more space between the blade type part and what goes into the forearm and also the blade type part is removable. We'll show why in a second. We'll take this out. Again, that's one piece. So no removable blade, don't try to do it. You don't want to break it. So we could start by just going ahead and lodging this inside. We can even take that off to make it easier. Okay. And we went over differences. There is a small slit right there. Okay. So it comes with a variety of pieces that tab in. Two that slit. So let's go ahead and put this adapter in. So see, you've got that right there. Okay. This already has one attached, but just for the sake of whatever, um, in here, and then pop that on. Okay. And it does pop on, but you're not going to hear like a loud click snap, whatever. So, okay, we've got that. Now for some of the larger weapons and you have the choice. Like right there, I didn't care because it's covered, but that's why they have that space so that you could pop this back on around set adapter and still give it plenty of space. Visually, again, I didn't care because it was covering the forearm anyway. I'm not that anal about it, but like for something like this, for example, not only would you tab this in, well, this is the Lancer, so it's going to go in on the other arm. Let's go ahead and turn her around. Okay. So not only would you tab that in, but, and I gotta find the other gauntlet here. It also has a space for the hand to grip as well. So, you have options, all right? I'll go ahead and pre-put that in. Oh, it's really long, this one, so. Gonna have to bend the elbow up as well. But okay, elbow up. Go ahead and put this in. And it holds surprisingly well when you get that in. Well, what should I do first? What is the easiest way to go about this? Let's see. The problem is, is finding that hole. Not looking directly at it. Okay, now we got it. And, and there are ball joints in there, so you can angle these and whatnot, but yeah. There we go. So, okay. Make sure she's balanced. There we go. So you've got that. But on the inside, what you can also do is take one of the alternate hands, grip that, which we'll show in a second, and then just bend the wrist down. So that way she has full grip as well as the forearm support on the longer weapons like the Lancers. Okay, get a focus here. And one more thing about the this particular Lancer, it does have two separate ends. It has an open and a closed front end. And there you go. And just a quick overview on how to affect the, or attach the wing effects. You just take this part, this moves like so. Okay. And her balance is pretty hard, not because like she has loose joints or anything like that, especially after going ahead and polishing them up, but more so because she is standing on heels. But this actually pegs right in. Okay. 
And there's that. Now let's go ahead and start putting this stuff together in some pictures. Well, not some pictures, some poses and whatnot. All right. And good mixture of accessories here. So, of course, wings attached, wings of light effects. Got an alternate hand there, using the stand. Alternate face. I cannot get over just how good this character looks. And I've seen pictures of the character model and whatnot, and it's a decent design, but Snail Shell, they added their little twist on here, some artistic license there, to kind of match what they have going on in terms of their figures and stuff, so that this fits in with, like, the GN Project Girl and things like that. Man! And it's all subjective, but to me, this is the first Snail Shell just design? That has me floored looking at it. it. It's too good. Alright. And what we're utilizing is the sword. Or not the sword. The shield. The lance. Her regular face. This is the one she comes with by default. Um, I went ahead and made the eyes point downwards. So it's looking at you. Again just trying to get a mixture of these accessories. All right, we have those pieces hanging off the back there. And I feel like I'm going to say this a million times throughout this review. This this is just beautiful to look at. Like god damn. And lastly, we get to look at the legs for her cyber cyborg minotaur mode. It's pretty neat stuff. All right. So looking at the articulation, stretch or rotation in this part of the waist, there is up and down movement there, as well as up and down movement at the front half of that torso. The tail. Um, it's wiry, so everything moves, but there's no, like, specific rotation in this and that. It kind of just moves how it moves. All of these move individually. So these do, I guess, constitute the pieces on her back. So those armatures get removed before you attach this. Okay. Now, in terms of the legs, swivel at the hips, in and out. There is a hinge joint there as well as the ball joint, so a little bit extra. All right, in terms of legs, boom, boom, okay. And then let's see, is there more here? Nope, it's all there, so none here. And then the feet are just like her feet, okay. All right, so now let's get that primed up here, okay. Yeah, ready to attach. Okay, now in terms of attaching this, I did go ahead and put on the different butt piece. So, put that down, put this up. Okay. And when I was saying put that down, put this up, I was referring to the two different portions of the torso on the back half. Okay. Get that all adjusted. Feet are good to go, planted. And all things considered, you really don't have to do anything different. Then when she's on her normal two-legged mode, it's just making sure that, you know, the back end matches up or falls in line with however you've got her attached. So, okay, there's that. I was taking out those wire pieces in her back, so I took the wings out. 
to get those solid. And I'm putting those back now. I know some people like just going through different display options all the time, but for me, this is a character where I will probably end up getting a second one so I can have both the regular and Minotaur forms displayed, but yeah, it's kind of just because of the hassle of it all, kind of choose one or the other. It's not something that I can see myself going back and forth and just every other day changing it out. That kind of thing. So yeah. Okay. Now, just for display, I always go by Detolf is 16 inches. Obviously, there are a million different displays. I've got about front to back 9 inches. Obviously, the tails aren't expanded all the way back. I don't know why anybody would have them displayed just straight back, so it makes no sense to me. I don't care how long it is total. Yeah, in my opinion, pretty cool stuff. Okay, and I think this is a cool enough post to end it on. Again, this has been Snail Shell's Rosetta. She is a character from the mobile game. I believe it's a mobile game. Punishing Grey Raven. Outside looking in, it's just an incredible design. The toy itself is actually really awesome. Once I got the joints fixed, it went from being my least favorite to my absolute favorite Snail Shell product that I've owned. Uh, period. So lots of cool articulation to it. The design is awesome, and you know, that's in part to the company that made the video game, but I think their take on it is really awesome. The engineering behind this is really cool. The accessories are not only cool, but they're apt. You know, it doesn't feel, there's a lot, but for everything considered between it having two different modes and this and that, it doesn't feel like overwhelming, like a bunch of crap just thrown in there because um, this is A plus in my book. But at the same time, you are going to have to take some time, polish the joints, let it set for like, I don't know, three, four hours or something like that so that the polish can dry up and this thing can be actually usable. Because without it, unfortunately, it's just not. So like out of the box, I would probably rate it like three, four out of ten. But once the joints are finished up, God, it's a 10 or 11 out of 10. So, you know, take that as it will because I know some people do not like messing with their products, period, or having to do any kind of fixes on them, and I don't blame them. So, yeah, but you just should know that there are two different tiers if you choose to put in a little bit of work with this one. But anyway, this has been another Kuma Style Review. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.